turns out when you're spending time on a boat, you spend about half your time either eating or just thinking about eating. So let's look at the kitchen and how this really works. Firstly, what strikes me is the amount of room. I love it, plenty of working spaces. There's a microwave, there's also an oven down the bottom, a gas stove, plenty of storage, refrigeration and freezer over there. So I thought what we'd make today is an ultimate boating sandwich. I've pre-prepared a few things, but let's bung it all together. Okay, let's get started with the base. In this particular case, got some Turkish bread. This is fabulous. And we'll just slice off a chunk. Might as well make a huge sandwich. And cut it in half. Okay, there's our base. Now I like to get something colorful on either side. I'm thinking maybe some kind of hummus. Okay, looks pretty striking, doesn't it? Pretty good. And there we go. So next, slice of cheese, and I'm thinking maybe some protein. In this case, I've already paired a bit of schnitzel, which I made last night and brought along. So let's chop that up into nice thin strips. On they go, as many as we can squish in. Okay, mm, fantastic. Now, just to add a little bit of extra bite, sriracha, which is a little bit hot, so keep an eye on it. Like so, and we are nearly there. I'm thinking let's add a little bit of vegetable, in this case, some carrot. And on she goes, like so. Now it's starting to really look like something. Okay, what next? Maybe a final bit of crunch, a layer of fabulous green. And I might even just be a little bit more intentional than I normally am and uh, chop this thing up with a knife. And there you have it. Carefully placed, everything all together. Sandwich, fantastic. Let's pop this on a plate. Grab a toothpick and voila, sandwich a la Lagoon 42. Anyone hungry? Anyone want a singer? We're headed down to the starboard side and there's a great little feature snuck away here inside the stairs. What you have is a beautiful little window that allows you to see underneath the hull. Absolutely gorgeous. And the other thing I love is this closing door, which allows you to secure this side against the unwanted advances of children or other unwelcome friends. So here we are on the starboard side owner's cabin. And the first thing that strikes you is the sheer amount of space. Heaps of room around the bed to jump on and off from both sides and not disturb each other. That turns out to be really helpful. Also, there are five separate windows, which is great for creating light and also little curtains that close if you want to shut it down for the evening. The other thing I really like about this particular configuration is the huge amount of room here, a little spot that you might want to bung out a laptop and do a little bit of work. Plug it into this TV, watch a movie on your own, and this TV swings right around so you can see it right here from the bed. So here we are in the owner's side bathroom, and the unique feature is there's so much space. Plenty of room to walk around. Separate shower, separate toilet, plenty of room to wash up. You remember a second ago I was talking to you about feeling like this is a, an apartment of some kind rather than a boat? Well here, tucked away, your very own laundry. So here we are on the port side. And did I mention this thing feels like an apartment? Well, really it's more like a block of apartments because there are so many cabins. Here I am in another double cabin. There's another double cabin behind you up there and there's plenty of amazing amenities. There's 240 volt power, plenty of windows, plenty of hatches, and there's a bathroom here and up the front.
Here we are at the helm station, the very beating heart of this boat. You can do everything from here when it comes to controlling the boat, from the engines to the sails. So let's have a look at our nav here. We've got this main center screen. All of these screens can show different options. At the moment, we've got a GPS and we've got our depth gauge right here in the middle. We've also got our engine displays left and right, which we can control independently or just have one engine on if you're looking for a bit of extra fuel efficiency. Up the top on the left and right, we have the wind, but you can also display other things on those screens. You just switch them around back and forth. Finally, over here on the right side, very important, autopilot. The boat we're actually on is an owner's model. There's a couple other models. What are the different configurations? Sure, so this is, as you say, this is the owner's version. So on the starboard hull, um, the whole hull is for the, for the owner. So lots of light, lots of space, an island double bed. Um, large bathroom forward with a separate shower and then on the port side or the left hand side we've got um we've got the two cabins each with en suites so you've got i'm going to say three double beds in my head yeah. but there's another option as well you can buy a four cabin version you can yes you can get a four cabin version and you can also convert the um the two four peaks into berths if you wanted to sleep even more people on board yeah, what sort of great. sailing experience do people need to take on these big adventures i mean it seems extraordinary for people to cross an ocean well, a lot of our clients, uh, it's a mixture, but, but some come to it very, um, very inexperienced um, and, and we, do, we go a long way to, to teach them and show them as much as we can. But in that circumstance, most of the time we'll suggest some professional skippers to join, to join them, much like Aaron and Lara did for, for, that, for that first stretch, you know, so, you know, you can do it in a relaxed way. You can, pick their brains and learn more about your boat on your boat. Money, talk to me about the sort of people who buy this boat, because I was surprised to hear that 80 odd percent of your business is Australians and Kiwis, New Zealanders, but they're actually picking up their boats way overseas. Yeah, so uh, yeah, about 80% of our customer base usually picks up over in Europe. The reason for that is that they, um, you know, they can take on that adventure to, to sail around the Med, um, Usually they then cross the Atlantic sometimes um, during the, uh, the, what's it called? The for the ARC, the, uh, yeah. so the, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. So a lot of them will join that, that, that rally across from. So this is something I've not heard about. So that happens in November and they're able to then join with a group of people and cross the Atlantic together. It just is a bit of a safety net, gives them a bit more confidence yes. to, to take on that big trip. Um, then people end up in the Caribbean, the Bahamas. I mean, some people head up to the US, but typically it's at that point that they head back down through the Panama, then through the Pacific. You get to go and see, you know, the Galapagos Islands, Tahiti. Maybe then you can decide whether you want to go up to Papua New Guinea or down to New Zealand. And then, uh, you know, a lot of people have that aim to come back to Australia and bring their boat back to Australia eventually. So to go with a group, of, how many people go? Like, is it 50 odd yachts or something? It's quite a few, right? There'd be a couple of hundred yachts in the ARC, um, and they go two different ways. So you can either go from from the Canaries directly across to to the Caribbean, or or via um, um, Cape Verde Islands. So you sort of a two-step. And you don't process. run into cruise ships or you know cargo vessels. No, it's funny. I mean, you you see, there's thousands of people crossing the Atlantic but you'll rarely see them. So let's say that you're looking at adventuring, you're looking at buying a boat like this, picking it up overseas. There are some challenges right now, which is that you can't get overseas. So I love the idea of picking it up from France, but are there any other options right now in these kind of crazy COVID times? Yeah, so we've actually, we're, we're just sort of launching the idea of picking up in Tahiti. So we have some awesome connections over in Tahiti. I mean, the Pacific is an amazing place to travel around. It's one of the highlights on that trip back anyway. And being a little bit closer to home, I mean, we're hoping that, you know, we get that bubble between New, um, New Zealand and Australia pretty right. shortly. Yes. So the people can, you know, get over there, access that area, still slightly cheaper with the, the uh, stamp duty, um, not having to pay that until you, you actually get back into Australia, but still being able to have a really decent and um, an incredible adventure to some of these isolated places. I mean, I talk to people all the time because one of the things that I do is I talk to our customers, right. see what their highlights are and what they love the, the most. And a lot of the time it is those places in the Pacific, uh, specifically those really remote places that you can't really access by plane 
or really any other way. So, you know, places like some of the little islands off of um, Vanuatu or Papua New Guinea, um, where you've got these incredible cultures of people that, you know, you, you're not going to get to really dive into those cultures unless you, you were able to take your own boat. So I was talking to John about one of the amazing features of this boat, which is it doesn't tip. You can be out here full sail, full steam ahead, and still sipping champagne down in the cockpit. It's an amazing boat, and that's everything we had to say to you today about the Lagoon 42. I hope you got a good sense of what it's like, what it's like to really live with, what it's like to cook, sleep, and play with an amazing catamaran, our first catamaran on the show.